Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palicka International, new artist and educator here. And today we are going to sculpt a coffin-shaped nails and I will show you a step-by-step -step how to achieve the perfect look uh, of this shape. This is one of my favorite ones, you guys all know that I'm wearing only a coffin nail. And I hope you really enjoy watching this tutorial. Let's start! <laughs> My natural meals are waiting for a fresh set and I will show you how to do it and what to do so your nail extensions looks nice and they look beautiful. We are going to need the sculpting forms and I'm using the Nail Perfect sculpting forms. And I will demonstrate uh, to you how to build up the coffin shape nail on this uh, finger. Uh, so the first thing you have to do it before you start uh, filing, just dehydrate the nail plates so there is no oils, there is no dirts on it and then we can move on and push back the cuticles push back the cuticles and using 180 grit we are going to scratch the surface of the natural nail plate so there is no shine on it so this way we will prepare the nails for uh, gel extensions file the free edge and um, this nail is a fantastic nail to demonstrate any kind of uh, nail extensions just because it isn't an easy nail. It is a nail which grows down and it also has like a really overgrown hyponychium. So a hyponychium is a part of the skin which just lies directly underneath of the uh, nail and you can see it up there. This is a living tissue and it protects my nail bed from any part of infections and you can see it sticks out in here. You wouldn't cut it, you wouldn't file it uh, because it would be very painful for, for a client and to be able to do a nice uh, extensions on it you will need to trim your foam. Also the nail folds and you can see that they are pretty uh, decent as well so we again will need to cut the form for a good uh, product application. If there is any um, cuticle on the nail plate you would remove it either with the, um, this side of the cuticle pusher or you would use your e-file to file it off. I don't have overgrown cuticles so my next step would be to remove any dust which is there and then take a nail form. So when I'm pulling the nail form, I've got also the tilted video on explaining how to apply the forms. We have to put this part underneath of the form and then with the scissors we need to trim the form. So like kind of custom and for a different type of the nails. And some clients would have the hyponychium like I do. So if we've got the hyponychium you would cut a very small either triangle or a rounded shape to get the form fit in properly. But also some nails might be really wide so then you need to cut out the form a little bit more. Okay, so this side will be also quite nice to show you as well. So because my nail has those hyponychium, I'm just going to trim this form in there. So this way it is going to be easier to place it correctly underneath of my nail. And then also I want to pinch it as well. So I'm checking the size of my finger and then I'm going to trim this form in the one side and other side. So that will let me squeeze the form stronger to get a more narrow, narrow looking uh, nails. And you can see the form has also those two tabs. Open them up. If you don't open them up, when you place your form, your form will go down and then the nail will go down as well. And I don't like those kind of looking nails. Before you would start the form application, you would roll your form to get it nice um, thick or nice shape of the nail. Okay, and the C curve give it a strength, so like if the nail is flat like this, so this is a flat nail, it's very wobbly, but if we've got the C curve, so that's our C curve, if we've got the C curve, the nail is much stronger, that's why we are doing it, okay? And then if I'm applying it on the client, like I want to close my tabs, just the first ones a little bit, that's the way how I apply the form. And then before we start, um, in case we have touched the nail, dehydrate it again, so just before you apply the nail form. And you might find it really difficult for some clients as well that they might have very sweaty or very oily hands. Just go and gently dehydrate it as well. Only if you've got problems, like you don't want to apply the products on the client's skins. But yes, sometimes I have been doing it as well if the client got really oily skin. And now look what's happened. So I show you the side view first. This is going to give us very ugly nail. Um, 
growing down the way. We really don't want that, okay? So we don't want the form to go this way. What we want with the form is to go nice and straight. And on this knee, this is going to be extremely difficult just because of this hyponychium. Okay, so I want my form to go, so the end part is going to be even higher. Like I will be extending my nails to the letter L, which is there. So I want this letter L to be on the same height where my cuticle is. So that's the side view. The front view, and this finger is fantastic as well, guys. <laughs> so um, the front view, let me take something really straight. Uh, cameraman, uh, I need more bigger view. I need a bigger view. Perfect. So this nail is pretty, this finger is pretty nice and straight. So the form application would be very easy because I would just go like nice and straight. But this finger, look what is the what it is doing. Let me take the form out for a second. So this finger comes straight in here, then it goes a little bit uh, this way, and then it almost goes straight again. So it is a really funny finger. And then if I would follow only this part of my finger, the nail extension would go like this. Okay, and we really don't want that. So ideally, you want to follow those two bones because they always straight. So if you've got clients which nails are wonky, <laughs> you would always follow those two bones because they are always straight. And then these bones, they can go some of them like this way, some of them this way. So depending on this one goes actually this way. So you don't follow this two, you only follow those two. But at the same time, uh, camera is checking his hands. <laughs> we all got wonky fingers, come on. Uh, but uh, guys, if you want to have those um, happy, like you want to have also a little bit of common sense and happy medium. So imagine, like I'm, I might try to, I don't know, can I do it? Oh yes, there we are. Imagine my finger is like this. Uh, no, I can't do it. I don't know. Oh, maybe this one. Okay, so imagine my finger is like this, yeah? And if, if my finger is like this and all the nails are coming straight and then I'm going to follow those two bones, this nail is going to go, this nail is going, it's a shame I don't have a nail, but this nail is, imagine this is a, the tip of the brush is a nail. So this nail will go two bones and it will come up in here. It will look weird, it wouldn't look straight. Then here you would also show more um, the wonkiness of the finger. So you want to do a happy medium. You want to follow those two bones, but also you want to follow the natural nail shape as well. So you would go kind of like this. So not straight, that would be straight. Not how the finger goes, but happy medium. So, so we just, I hope you could clearly understood what I mean. Now let's shake my hands. So let's relax a little bit and do this form application, okay? Just in case if I uh, touch it, I want my nails to last a really long time. We are going to place this form. So this is the middle of my form and I'm just following a happy medium. So those two bones, but also I need to take into the consideration that my nail grows a little bit uh, this way. Okay, so place it, it. There we are, that is nice. A little bit higher to the top because I want letter M at the height of my cuticle. Okay, so it looks like the form is going a little bit up. And then once I'm happy with the form placement, that means also the tabs are not close together or they are not overlapping. That's why we have opened them, because if I wouldn't open them, the form would be uh, going down. So this is really crucial. And now I can start squeezing the form, okay, because I'm happy with the placement of it. And you can also see what's happened with the tabs here as well. Uh, if I wouldn't squeeze them, it would be very difficult. If I wouldn't cut them, it would be very difficult for me to squeeze this form. And now another thing I want to show you again, you can see the, the width of my fingers, like uh, of my fingernail. So this is the width of the nail I want to do. I don't want to go any more than this. Okay, so just squeeze it a little bit more. And each time when we squeeze the form, uh, the form goes a little bit higher up as well. So this way, let me check. Yes, I'm happy. I always have an issue there. So just push the form. Make sure there is no gapping on this side. Okay, and I'm happy with this form application. We can build up a really nice and beautiful nail. We are going to use the fiber gel in a light rose. And before I place the product on my nail, I will tell you step by step what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, okay? Let me have some support. Okay, so we have to dehydrate the nail plate again. So that's an extra nail dehydrator. Wait for it to dry. 
Yes, I'm all about the dehydration, but this way the nails last really good. And then we've got Universal Airbond. Rota, don't touch the form. Universal Airbond is fantastic stuff because, first of all, like normally when we're working with the gels, you have to use the bonding gel. And um, Neil Perfect had the bonding gel as well with his old system. And then they introduced the Universal Airbond, which works like bonding gel with this difference that you don't have to cure it. So this is a lot of time server for every time saver for every new technician. And it's a fantastic stuff because you've got only one product for your acrylic application and for your gel application. That's why I love it so much. And then my gel brush. So my gel brush is always hiding away from the direct sunlight, but it might catch some dust. So before every single application, I'm gently cleaning it. And I like to work with the oval one just because it has a really nice tip to get through around the cuticle area. So you can see it, I can really easily get around the cuticle area, I can really easily cap all the free edge. And by the free edge, we mean this sides here, this sides there, everything which is not attached to the nail bed. Okay. So let's sculpt this nail. I will apply nice and like pick up the scoop of the gel, nice and thin, remove the excess, nice and thin layer through the entire nail plate and the extension. And then give it a cure. So I'm picking up the product only on one side of my brush, remove the excess of it, just so you've got very little at the tip. If I wouldn't remove this excess, the product would be messy all over. Sorry, cameraman, there we are. And then with this little product, which I've got on my brush, I'm just going very close to the cuticle. Look like how close I'm getting with this product. Very close to the cuticle. Cap those free edge. And this way we have applied the product through the entire, uh, entire nail plate. Then pick up another scoop of the product. And I need to work, guys, really fast. The product is very uh, runny. And then work through the extension. So now I'm going to extend the nail like really nice and thin layer. This is only a skeleton of the nail. So one side, other side. Don't go back with your brush. Just work through the entire length of the nail which you want to create it and we're going pretty pretty long on those nails check the side so now i'm going to the side and just apply enough product on the sides and then other side and apply enough product on the other side Okay, very thin amount, because if you've got thin, you are not going to float your cuticles, you are not going to uh, make a mess of this nail. So very thin amount of the product, and this is our skeleton of the nail. Then put it inside the lamp and give it a cure. But we want to cure it half a time. So normally we would cure it one minute, this gel, and half a time is a 30 seconds, and then we want to do the pinching. Now with the pinching, if I'm working on the clients, I would not necessarily pinch the nails. So what I would do is I would do the pinching only with my form and this way the nails will be nice and slender look. On my nails I like to pinch but don't do it on a weak nails. Don't do it if you're not experienced nail technician um, because pinching can be also danger. Uh, the nail can crack halfway through if you place it in the wrong place or if you over pinch the uh, natural nail. So really only use it uh, when you know what you're doing. And also um, it, it shouldn't be painful like at all like so my nails are really used to the pinching and and they never painful with it so you cannot place it too high you only want to place it at the widest part of the nail you can see the nail is really nice and slender um, but I'm just going to give it those extra pinch so never sore gentle squeeze just to make this nail more narrow looking okay and then finish the curing so another 30 seconds cure after that, we will be able to move on into the apex application. And now, depending on the length of the nails, we could do it either with the one scope, or if uh, the nails are much longer, you might need to add an extra product. Uh, and then depending also on the temperatures of the product. So you can see it, this gel, because it's really nice and cozy in the house. Uh, the gel is really like runny consistency. So it it's runs back to the pot. And that's mean I have to work extremely quick with it 
um, otherwise it will just float everything sometimes when you pick up the gel it's almost solid and then you have to massage the product more so depending what consistency you prefer either work slower or you look work much faster okay so that's my new cure and with this step i will also pinch it the second time after we apply it and when i'm pinching also the sides of the needle go lower so that's mean i've got more uh, product in there okay now we need to build up the apex so what i'm going to do i will turn the needle into my side as well apply nice and thin layer and then build up the apex on the needle and the gravity is going to help me do that uh, always use the gravity uh, if we place the needle upside down the gel will run down the way if you hold the needle this way the gel will run in here if you hold down the way the gel is going to run down the way okay because it's kind of almost liquid consistency and um, now i'm going to show you how to build up the apex as well so i'm picking up a small scoop of the product and i need to cover the entire nail plate so again remove the excess of it and cover entire nail plate everything in there so we've got already two layers of the product around the cuticle area and two layers of the product at our free edge and so those on the sides i've got always uh, a messing up in this uh, side of the nail always there so i'm always filling up this gap as well and then i'm going to build up my apex so with the apex just before i pick up the product because i will have to work very fast i will pick up a large scoop of the product on the one side of my brush and hold this product with my brush turn the finger down the way and help myself if i'm working on the client i would keep twisting this this hand so the hand helps me and also i will work with my brush as well okay so it's a double work which means you are double speed and we're working from the top little pressure so that's mean you've got lots of product left in there one side other side one side other side you're working like this and then the more to the end you get more pressure so you are leaving a little product only so your free edge is not a really thick uh, thick nail so let me clean the brush quickly because i want to have a nice and clean brush so nice and clean brush so i can pick up a decent amount of the product and i can work one side other side okay so the water product is very watery and i don't think so i will be able to build up on the on the one go so i only work through the middle of the needle like this is my huge apex because by the time i finish it the product is going to run to the side so one side other side one side other side one side other side one side other side okay and you can see it i've got my apex i've got a bit of missing product there and i should cook it as soon as possible before it starts to run okay so never wait too long just cook it quickly inside the lamp if you would wait too long you will make a mess of the nail with the gels you have to work fast same with the acrylics if you would be too slow the product would set and you would be able to move it the gels likes to sometimes give a heat spike especially when there is a first new set and uh, there is quite a lot of product so i have pulled my hand out just to slow down the curing process and then i'm going to put it back inside the lamp so a couple seconds more and with this, if it would be a short nail, that's it. We would have built up a nail. But I will show you, I probably got some missing places just because it's a pretty, actually very long nail. And the longer the nails are, the more difficult it is to build it up. Okay, so the side view on my apex, I've got enough product. Like I don't want huge Kilimanjaro. I've got missing place in there, but the pins, because I want to go for a coffin shape, I will be filing all this down into the coffin shape so yes i've got a tiny triangle missing this side is having too much product like i can already uh, see it and now on my apex here as well i could add i would remove this bulk here but i could add a slight drop of the product in there and you can do it that so it is better and easier to do it after the product is cured because you've got more control over it so i'm just applying a very small amount of the product only on these places where I've got it missing. So this way you are not re-sticking your uh, needles to get like mm, misshaped or you are not risking getting it all flooded as well. 
Okay, so just the tiniest amount of the product ever. And then I can give it a cure. So I'm going to give it half a way cure and then pinch it from the other side as well. So clean my brush, put it on the side and then we will shape it as well and I will show you how to shape it. So that's my new almost cure. There we are. I can pull the form, so squeeze the form, pull it down. And now I'm going to place the pinching clamp upside down because I want really nice and slender looking nails. And then put it to the lamp to finish the curing. And the filing is not going to take us a really long time. When the pinching clamp slides, you just have to clean it with the blue scrub. <laughs> And then give it a cure. So I'm making sure my nail is going to be cured properly and then we can move on on the filing and I will also show you how to hold the file and how to file effective so so your work is uh, pretty pretty quick. And coffin is definitely my favorite shape like I think it looks the nicest. But I would use the same technique for the almond shape nails, I would use the same technique for the square nails like, I, I think it's just the nicest results and pretty quick. Obviously, a single nail always takes the longest because of the curing time and all the explanations. But I hope you have found it very useful and you have learned something in there. So I've got another 12 seconds of curing and then we can remove the inhibition layer and start the filing. So I'm removing the pinching clamp and I also show you how nice and pinchy this nail is. So it's a really nice and slim looking nail, not over the top. And uh, I'm going to remove the inhibition layer and now shape it it's really nice. Okay, so the free edge, file the free edge, not too much. And then file your sides. So this is going to be a coffin shape and we have to kind of file into the V shape. So I'm just filing one side, now other side, so this is all going to gone. Okay, the bulk I was talking about, so I'm just going to straight away remove the places where I'm sure I've got too much product. And then it's already look much better. So the next step I want to do is to file around the cuticle area. So I'm just filing and blending any pro like I don't want to have any gaps like or any lines, any product which the client could catch because that can cause the lifting. So I'm really blending all that out. I don't need to touch my apex. And then after that, I'm just going to do my favorite nail movement, which is like this. So the nail goes like a C-carve shape and you want to file it like this as well. You cannot file it only from the top. So you need to file the sides and then you file on the top and then you file another side. Okay. So this way you will make a really nice and even nail. And depending if I'm doing a gel polish over it, I would make it either kind of slimmer looking nail, or if I'm doing it for a French application, then I would make it slightly thicker. Now, go back to your free edge, because now you can see it more. Basically, that's the nail filed, like I don't need to do much more. So just touch it a little bit more, take a buffer and just buff the entire nail. Blend everything in here. 
And guys, like, I mean, if you watching me for a long time, you know those needles last me ages. They really don't need to be like a huge Kilimanjaro needles. I think if the needles are too thick and too heavy, they, they've got more lifting, so I can probably file it a little bit shorter. By always doing those kind of thickness needles, I've got a little bit too much on this side. I'm always doing those kind of thickness needles, uh, and they last me really, really well. So if I have uh, shortened the side a little bit, I also need to remove the bulk of the product in there as well. Yeah, and that's, that's my meal finished. <laughs> and it's ready for a gel polish application. So I hope guys you have really enjoyed watching this uh, tutorial. And if you did, let me know down in the comments below. And if you would like to see more of those uh, type of technical things, uh, let me know as well. Glittery hacks and bye for now.